Welcome back. This is part six of the Circle Jump Godot mobile game. In this video, we're going to add sound to the game and also start working on the system for doing color schemes. All right, let's get started. Okay, to start with this time around, we're going to add a new script that we're going to use as an auto load. So I'm going to say new script here. I'm going to call this settings. This is where we're going to put all of our settings code for things that we want to enable at startup, things like that, configuration. So since we're going to be adding some audio, we want to be able to enable and disable sound and music. And then we're going to have some gameplay stuff like circles circles per, per level. So you're going to go up a level every five circles. Level is basically going to take care of the increasing difficulty. So the higher level you get, the more often you're going to get limited circles or moving circles or things like that. So let's add some sounds. So over here in main, we're going to have an audio stream player. I'm going to call this one music. And the asset for that one in the sounds folder, I've got a bunch of sound clips in the assets folder for various things. Some of them we may not use. I just grabbed a, a bunch of likely sounding ones to start with. Um, but we're going to use this music. So I'm going to drop that in the stream there. And then on the menu screens, we're going to have a another one. And this is going to be a click sound that will happen when we tap on buttons. And the sound for that one is this menu click wave. Drop that in there. It sounds like just a little click. And then on the circle, I want it to make a sound when the as when the limited timer ticks down, right? Every time the we wrap around one orbit. So it's just gonna make a beep sound. And that's using this 89, number 89. Again, I got these all from a sound pack, so they have numbers on them. And we're going to come back. We'll come back and discard the ones we don't want later. Okay. And then on the jumper, I've got some sounds that I want for this one too. Actually, two of them. One is going to be the jump sound when we press the jump button. And one is going to be the capture sound. Okay. And the capture sound is 88. That's this. Okay. And the... And I believe number 70 is the one we want for the jump. Yeah. Okay, so we have those in there. And then this, in our settings here, these are going to determine whether the sound should play or not. So we need to put that in our project settings as an auto load, which I've done right here already. And then we can go into our code. So in main, when we have a new game, we're going to say if settings.enable music, music.play. And then we're actually going to do the same thing when the game ends. We're going to stop the music. And then we can go through our other ones. And then when we press a button, we just want to say if settings enable sound, we'll play the click sound on our menu. On our circle, we're going to play the beep when we tick down an orbit here. Enable sound, we will beep.play. And then Grab that, and over here on the jumper, we're going to play the jump sound here when we jump. And then on the capture, when we get captured here, we'll play that capture sound. So let's try that out and see if we hear our sounds. So here in our menu, we're hearing the click. When we play, we've got music, we've got the beep ticking down, we've got the jump sound. Okay. 
And now we need to connect up those buttons on the settings screen so we can turn on and off the sound. So on our screen's script, we're going to need to change the button appearance because we in our assets folder we've got an appearance on the buttons. Audio on, audio off, and music on, music off. So we're going to want to alter between those pictures. So let's go ahead and load those into a pair of dictionaries so that I will have a link between the state, which is true, and the button, which I can preload the image of. Easiest way to do that when it's true, audio should be on, so I'll drag that uh, path in and then do the same for the other ones. So I have my sound buttons and my music buttons defined for true and false, loading the appropriate texture. And then down here when we check our button, we're going to want to tell it to change. So right now we're just passing the button name, which would make me have to then go and search for the node with that name. So I think when we connect up the buttons, we're going to pass the button itself, which technically that means we don't have to pass the name, right? Because if we pass the button, then we get a button, and we will match button.name. And then we need our two button types. So if we press the sound button, then we want to toggle that. So in the settings, we're going to change enable sound to not enable sound, which will turn it on and off. And then we need to change the button. So button dot texture normal is going to be equal to sound buttons and then the value of true or false. And then we're going to do the same thing for music. So I can probably copy and paste this and make this the music button. There we go. So let's try that out. So now if I go into settings, I should be able to toggle these things on and off. So see when I'm off, I'm not getting any clicks, so that's good. All right, let's turn off music and play. Yeah, I've got sound effects now, but no music. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start setting up a way for us to do color schemes. And so I've added here to the settings script a dictionary with a name for each color scheme. And each color scheme is going to be a list of colors for what thing that they're going to color. And so we're going to have a background color of the game window, the player's body, the player's trail. And then for the circles, fill is that pie color that fills in the center. And then static circles can be a different color from limited circles. So you have a visual distinction. And so I've just put some different colors in here, right? And then we'll have a variable that will track what theme we have selected. And I'm not going to worry too much about the UI for that yet. Let's just get it working first. So let's start with, we'll just, you will use that neon one one to start with. So now we can go to each object and set its color based on what the theme is set to. So on the circle, our problem is that the circles are all using the same material, which means if we change the color on the material, it's going to change on every circle at the same time. So we need to make the material unique. So we'll do that here. We can say sprite material equals sprite material dot duplicate so now it has its own unique copy and then we also want to set the sprite effect to match make sure it uses the same material as the sprite does and then we can set its color and we're going to set its color based on what mode it's set to so in mode static so let's make of our color here 
So we select the color based on what mode we're in. So color will be settings.theme and then what category we want, which is circle static. But if we're on limited, then we wanted to pick circle limited. And then in our material, we can set shader param color to that variable. And then we also want to use in our draw where we're filling in the circle arc. And then down here, this, this color should be whatever the setting for circle fill is. And then on the jumper, we have a similar situation where we're going to set it in the ready. And then we also want to set the trail. So the trail points dot default color, that's the line 2D, equals player trail. Okay, let's make sure that works. So we go in and now I've got a different color scheme going. And you can go into settings and change it to neon 2 or neon 3 and you'll see the different color schemes showing up. So that'll do it for this time around. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you can get the next video. Uh, next time we're going to start working on the level progression so we can select different types of circles as you advance. I'll see you then.